I wanted to cover an important topic if you're an athlete, and it, it relates to how much potassium and sodium do you need when you're actually sweating. Now, the problem is that most people think of sodium loss when they're sweating. They don't think of the potassium loss. So this video is for that person. Normally, we need about 4,700 milligrams of potassium every single day. Now, you can get by with like 2,500 milligrams if you're not exercising, but that's not completing all the functions in the body. You actually need at least 47. And if you're exercising and you're stressed or you have inflammation, you have other problems, especially rheumatoid arthritis, this number could probably go up to 6,000 milligrams per day. Now, you need 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day. That would come out to, I would say, about a level teaspoon per day. But that's from someone that doesn't exercise. Let's say, for example, you are working out really intensely outside where it's hot in the summer and you're playing tennis. You could lose up to two pounds of sweat. Now, for those people that are on the metric system, a little more advanced than us uh, Americans, that's 0.9 kilograms, almost one kilogram of sweat every single hour. So if you're a football player or you're playing tennis or you're in a, some boot camp or some type of physical activity, you could lose a tremendous amount of fluid. Now, how much sodium loss? Well, it's very difficult to tell exactly how much, but it's gonna be between 500, at the very minimum, up to 2,000 milligrams of sodium loss every single hour. That's like the, almost the entire uh, recommended daily amount of sodium. But with potassium, you lose 150 to 500 milligrams of potassium through the sweat, okay? But that's not all. You also have something called glycogen. Glycogen is stored glucose in your muscle and in your liver. And anytime you store glucose, you need potassium. So two things. Number one, you're using up your glycogen. And when you lose up your glycogen when you're exercising, guess what? You're losing your potassium too. So that's an addition to this amount. Not to mention, if you're a long distance runner, you might be taking glycogen or that goo every hour. Uh, people have been known to take 100 milligrams of that every single hour when they're in a race. When you're taking glycogen without potassium, you're depleting your potassium reserves even more because it takes potassium to store glucose as glycogen. So that would subtract from this even more. Now, this is one of the reasons why a long distance runner could get cramps, bloating, or fatigue because of the loss of potassium, even more than the sodium. Because normally they're taking salt, but they're not considering sodium. And here are a few more uh, symptoms of low potassium. Nausea, vomiting, weak muscles, muscle spasm, and increased heart rate. And lastly, when you get a blood test, realize that the great majority of potassium in your body, like 98.5%, is inside the cell. It's in the muscle. It's not in the blood. So if you get a blood test, it's very likely that an actual potassium deficiency inside your cells is going to show positive by testing the blood. I put some links down below for more data on potassium, which I think is important, so you can check that out. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.